Hello and welcome to my guide on armoring. This was the uh, the number one thing that people wanted a guide on, so this is what we're going to do a guide on next. Now, um, well, the other thing that people wanted was more impressions of the beef, but you know, we'll do what we can. So, the basic question was, how do I? And this is based on the last guide about heat management. How do I know when to strip away armor to put more weapons in? I mean, how do I know how much armor to include in the first place? Well, I was racking my head at work today over this question. This is actually an incredibly complicated question to answer mathematically. So, we're going to simplify it as much as we can. Obviously, armoring comes in two parts. How much, which is the incredibly complicated bit, and where, which is the easy bit. And we're going to start with the complicated bit and make it as simple as possible. So, here I have the right section and left section of a mech set up. And we're just going to pretend that these are two separate mechs. Now, the right mech has got 100 armor and two medium lasers. To make things simple, we're presuming that one ton gets you 100 points of armor. The correct figure is that one ton gets you 80 points of armor, but to make the math simple, we're going to say that one ton gives you 100 points of armor. Likewise, the left-hand side mech has got 200 points of armor and one medium laser. So effectively, we have created two light mechs here, one with, 100, with one ton of armor and two tons of medium laser, and one with two tons of armor and one ton of medium laser. This is the scenario which we have set up. So, if these two mechs were to fight, who would win? Well, the answer is that the right mech would win, the right side mech, because it does 50 damage per turn, and we have uh, 200 armor plus 100 structure. Let's just call it 100, keep the math simple. Okay, so that's going to take six turns to kill the left-hand mech. But with our only one medium laser on the left-hand mech, which is 25 damage around, we are going to need eight turns to kill the right-hand mech. So, obviously, with the right-hand mech getting its kill in six turns and the left-hand mech taking eight turns to get its kill, the right-hand mech will win. Seems obvious enough. But, what happens if we start adding more tonnage? So, both both mechs have an, an extra ton to play with, so they both add an extra medium laser. So who wins now? Does anything change? Well, the time to kill on the right-hand mech is now 300 by 75, four turns. And the time to kill on the left-hand mech, well, oh god, I got them the wrong way around. The time to kill for the right-hand mech is going to be four turns, as I said, because the left-hand mech has got 300 hit points, so 75 into 300 is four. <clears throat> the left-hand mech is going to take, well, it's going to take four turns as well, right? Because we have 50 damage, and 50 into 200 is also four turns. So now it's a draw. So that's weird. Okay, so what happens if we add more? So we add another one. So now the situation is, in fact, let's just add another two just to speed things up. So the uh, right-hand mech is now packing five medium lasers, and the left-hand mech is now packing four medium lasers. So the left-hand mech has got a time to kill of two turns, 100 damage, 200 HP, two turns. The right-hand mech has got 125 damage, but against 300 armor, it is going to take at least three turns to get the kill. So, you could come to the conclusion here that more, ar uh, more armor becomes more beneficial the more firepower that's being thrown around, right? But that's not the end of the story. So, interestingly, there is a critical point where the armor becomes worthless, and that critical point is obviously, well not obviously, but if the right hand mech is going full beef with 12 medium lasers, 
that's 300 damage. And 300 damage means that the left hand mech with its 300 HP will be killed instantly in one turn. And conversely, the left hand mech will also have a similar amount of medium lasers and it will kill the right hand mech also in one turn. So, it's very, very difficult to say how much armor you should have because it's not a simple equation. It's in fact a whole weird curve where having more firepower benefits you up until a point and then as the level of firepower increases the benefit of armor increases but only up until the point that mechs are not one-shotting each other once they hit the point that they're one-shotting each other then the armor doesn't matter does it matter if you have 400 armor if you get one shot you might as well have no armor because you're still gonna get one shot so it's very 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 complicated to actually say this is how much armor you should have However, there is a sort of general rule of thumb that I have used or, or can use. And it's, it's basically, can I buy an extra turn of survival? So if my mech does 400 da uh, 200 damage, say. So let's put 200 damage on. So if I'm doing 200 damage or the expected damage of the enemy is 200 then the ideal amount of armor for a section is 205 right or you know as much as I can get now don't forget of course that damage is not gonna be completely concentrated it's gonna be split amongst the section it hits even with precision strike but the general point is you need to buy turns if you're not buying a turn there's no point if if you're in the sort of phase of dealing with assaults all the time and you know that your average assault has got 300 damage you want about 350 armor so that you could potentially take a complete hit and survive and get that extra turn or if the damage is split equally between all sections that you can take two complete hits and still have just enough health left to survive a third one as I said the math behind it is very complex where it gets easier of course is for the most part mechs cannot generally ship with enough firepower to instantly kill a mech of the same class not easily and armor how much armor you can put on is relatively limited so usually it is worth putting on as much armor as you can get because at 80 points of armor for one ton you are effectively getting um, 80 hit points for one ton right which is the offset of that is that you're offsetting 80 damage for one ton and you name the weapon that does 80 damage in one ton well there isn't one right the best tonnage to damage in the game at least for a normal weapon ignoring support weapons a normal weapon is the medium laser 25 damage per ton so buying yourself extra turns does help a lot and the value of armor is very good once the levels of damage get high enough for it to matter so I've said a lot of things here and I'm not sure how many people are gonna sort of understand it but the general takeaway is having full armor and sacrificing your output your firepower output is a mistake but it's not as bad of a mistake as putting on full firepower and sacrificing your armor but only if having armor would buy you extra turns of survival which in almost every case I can think of it will so it's basically always a mistake to have full firepower and no armor um, the other thing I would say is that you know in this game it is incredibly difficult 
um, to prevent the enemy from targeting down a glass cannon mech. So I would r really seriously advise against thinking, well, I'm going to have two armored mechs and they're going to soak up all the damage and I'm going to have two firepower mechs like in the back of Beyond and they're going to do the damage for me. And I'm going to have that typical RPG armored front firepower in the rear kind of a setup. That's fine until that one mission where like four enemies teleport in behind you and just absolutely murderize you. So, the best advice I can ever give is err on the side of armor. Having very heavy armor and moderate to high firepower is never that bad. But having very high firepower and no armor is extremely bad when it goes wrong. So don't take that risk at all. Now, <clears throat> the next question is where do you put your armor? So, generally speaking, of course, you want armor everywhere. But a lot of mechs, the Hunchback being the particular example, have the ability to put as much firepower as you want into one side of the mech. So, if we uh, were looking at a uh, laser hunchback, it can have eight medium lasers in this center torso here. So, I'm just going to use like two, um, a set of large lasers to represent that. So, with the hunchback design, you would have all of your firepower in the right torso and nowhere else, right? So, obviously, you want all the armor there, for the most part. So any armor that you're going to invest should go into that right torso section. And you also obviously want to armor up your right arm. The rule for the legs and the center torso is that you should have whatever your center torso is going to be. I would favor as much as you possibly can get a lot of the time, but you do want to get the tonnage correct. So let's go with 300 in this case. Your legs should then equal the value of the center torso. So in this case, both legs should be 150. If you're going to uh, equip jump jets and you want to have DFA in reserve, you can go higher, just noting that you probably only want a DFA once to avoid making yourself easy to kill. The reason why, obviously, is if your legs are softer, if the ratio is wrong and your legs are softer than the CT, people will just rip your legs off and kill you that way. If your uh, CT is softer than your legs, then people will just blast your CT and you'll lose that way. I mean, either way, the CT always takes a little bit of damage, even if you're being shot from the left or the right. A little bit tends to find its way into the CT, so you do want pretty thick armor on the CT just to resist that that incoming abuse. Um, don't ever end your armoring on, you know, points of armor, because that makes no sense. Always try and e end it on even tons, so that you can uh, add an extra ton of whatever jump jet, medium laser, whatever it happens to be, more ammo, um, wasted. You know, wasting a whole ton just to get an extra 30 points of armor or something is, is really not worth it. Okay, so lastly, strategies for armoring. So the only armoring strategy that I really know of that actually matters any is uh, the Beef's Kung Fu strategy. So it is said in Kung Fu that the left hand tells the truth while the right hand tells the lie. Oh god, I can't, I can't, I can't do beef impressions anymore, okay? Six people who wanted beef impressions, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never again, okay, alright, I might, I might do them again. Okay, you may have heard this strategy referred to before as shielding, or shield arming, or um, wall arm, or I've heard, I've heard all kinds of things. So the, the general strategy is that you armor one side, and you present that to the enemy and you keep your weapons in the other side and you hide that side. Now, just a few points to note on this. You don't under you don't 
under armor the weapon side, right? Even if you can present the shielded side to the enemy all the time, there comes a point when this side is going to break and damage starts piling into the CT. That is the moment that you want to show the weapon side, right? This side has served its purpose by that point. So now it's time to show the right side or even the rear if you've got armor there. Um, and the other thing is, is that the enemy might get shots on your weapon side or, you know, try to get an angle on your on your weapon side. You might not be able to prevent all incoming damage on the weapon side. So obviously you don't want to under armor the weapon side because that's where your weapons are. So don't make that mistake. If you are going to make a, uh, a shielded design like this, a shield wall design or whatever, make sure that you fully armor the weapon side, including the arm, to prevent the weapon side from being destroyed. And then whatever spare armor you have goes in the shielded side. If, say, you only had enough uh, armor to fill half, you know, half of the left or half of the right, it's half of the left that you should go for. So if I only had the tonnage to put half armor, then I would build it like this with half armor on the left side. Because at the end of the day, the left side is just there to serve as a damage magnet. And when it's done, obviously I don't want the enemy to then be focusing my center torso. So I'm going to start showing the right hand side. And if the enemy manages to get a shot on the right hand side, I want that side to be tough. So the mistake that I see with the shield design is often that the shield side is fully armored and the weapon side is like got less armor for some reason maybe under the presumption that no one will ever get a shot on the weapon side but that actually doesn't make any sense if you think about it so don't make that mistake if you are going for this kind of design you want to fully armor the weapon side and then put whatever residual armor in the in the left hand side um, and that's pretty much it. The other thing I wanted to say about, uh, sorry, talk about is rear armor. So with rear armor, I am quite fond of having a lot of rear armor and people who have watched my videos see me loading a lot of rear armor and then not using it a lot of the time. But when I do use it, it's very effective. So we were discussing before about the amount of armor. You can't actually have a huge amount of armor which is why I said that typically it makes sense to armor very heavily because as the f level of firepower increases as we discussed before the value of armor increases up until that point that the one shots start happening but that's very rare so the rear armor on a lot of the assaults is half the value of the front armor but I think of that as like an extra turn that I can use when I really need to. So I'm fighting the enemy and they start busting up my front, okay, and the front starts taking heavy damage. I can then sprint away from the enemy to put distance between me and them. Now I can't fire my weapons on that turn, typically, but if I have thick rear armor, they can't really punish it. Yeah, they can shoot me in the back, but they've still got to go through that 100 points of armor in every rear section to actually do any structural damage. So when your front becomes crippled, not, you know, don't allow the structure to take much, if any, damage. When that point comes, just run away with your mech. And enemies, especially the AI, but humans do it as well, will target the rear. And in doing so, they're just buying you more time to kill them because your rear armor is really quite thick or has the potential to be half as thick as the front which is pretty thick so as you're sprinting away you've got all those evasion tokens from sprinting and then you have all that armor and so the opportunity that you're presenting is actually not an opportunity at all it's just an opportunity for them to waste a lot of firepower on a mech that potentially cannot fight back um, because if it turns around to face the front, it's lost so much of its front that it will almost certainly die or start losing weapons. And buying that extra turn might give you the opportunity to take out an enemy or to take out more of their weapons, etc., so that you can 
turn your mech around and carry on fighting. Remember that if you buy an extra turn and in that turn you rip off someone's arm and half of their firepower with it, you've effectively doubled the value of your armor because you've halved the enemy's firepower. So armor is all about buying extra turns. It's all about thresholds where that extra bit of armor buys you that one extra turn or that two extra turns and then using those turns to win the long fight. And obviously if you have all this armor you want to use it. So always think about presenting it. If your left side is smashed in but your right side is in great condition show your right side. If the whole front is smashed in show your back. If everything's smashed in but the legs DFA the enemy. And I believe if you take the high ground, um, there's more chance for them to hit your legs. So assume a high position and let them pummel your legs. I'm not 100% sure on that. It might just be um, confirmation bias on my part. But every time that a mech has been in danger of dying because its legs are taking massive damage, they've always been stood on top of a mountain. So I'm not quite sure on the math behind that. I would investigate that yourselves. But I think it's true don't quote me on it as it were. So anyway, I hope this answers some of the questions on how much armor you should have, where you should have it, etc. But there's no simple answer to how much armor you should have. I would generally say that you should put in as much armor as you can without dramatically sacrificing firepower. And I think the figure that you want to carry around in your mind is 10%. If you could get 10% more firepower by putting in a ton of weapons, then you should put in weapons, right? If you couldn't get 10% by putting in a ton, or whatever the equivalent is, so, you know, 20% by putting in 2 tons, or 40% by putting in 4 tons, or whatever, if you can't get that boost, then you want to put armor in. Because around 10 to 7%, if you do all the extreme math, is where it becomes beneficial to put more armor in than to add another ton of weapons. Because it would probably buy you an extra turn, and that matters. Um, I actually don't feel like the armor thresholds are high enough, at least in the heavy and the assault classes, to make having thick armor a bad choice. Um, but having you know, all weapon boats are definitely a bad choice. In the light categories, it's very different. Two medium lasers, as we saw in the original uh, discussion about uh, low firepower builds, where one's got one's got one medium laser and the other's got two. In those light light mech situations, more firepower actually works out for you better than additional armor does. But of course, evasion. Um, battlefield situations, pilot accuracy, all that kind of stuff can play around with the percentages, the chances to hit, and thus the overall effectiveness of armor at buying you extra turns. So I think the 10% figure is roughly, roughly correct, but it's going to be difficult to be like, it's this, and in this situation it's this, and in this situation it's that. So hopefully this guide has given you the tools you need to understand how it works, why we put armor on, obviously other than to not die, when armor makes no sense, for example when everyone's one-shotting each other, then you might as well strip it and have more weapons and multi-shot or something. Um, and hopefully this has just given you a, a well-rounded sort of uh, scope as far as armor goes. I wish that I could be cleaner cut here, but honestly, the math behind it for every situation is absolutely terrifying. So just stick with the rules of thumb. A lot of armor is never a mistake, generally speaking. If you can get more than 10% damage per ton for, for adding weapons, add weapons. But if you can't, then stick to adding armor until such that you can or that you can't add any more armor. Something along those lines. Make sure that your legs are half or the sum of the center torso armor. So if you have 300 armor in your center torso, you want 150 in the legs. 
just to not make your legs an easier target than the CT. And if you're going to DFA, obviously, armor the legs up as much as you want, or as much as you can, get your DFA in, otherwise, you know, why, why did you bother? And um, after that one DFA, you'll probably find that your legs are roughly the same strength as your center torso, so you're not leaving yourself vulnerable by DFAing. Of course, you can DFA again if you want, but that's the tactical risk that you take. And don't discount rear armor. So many people are like, rear armor is a waste of tonnage. Why would you ever bother? Rear armor is great. Put rear armor on, 75, 90% thickness on the rear. And when your mech is starting to get pummeled, sprint it away and just show your butt to the enemy. And if they attack you, great. They're going to waste turns carving up that rear armor that's potentially... 50% as strong as the front of your mech, which is pretty strong. And just buying you extra time, extra turns to deal with that incoming firepower. And in the single player game, of course, the rear armor sprint away allows you to rescue a mech that is potentially about to take, you know, damage that costs you sea bills and uh, saving it from taking any sea bill, you know, costing damage at all getting it out of harm's way and you know worst case scenario you've still got that mech you can always bring it back into the fight at a later point when the enemy has lost firepower you've done more damage to them you've ripped weapons off etc etc and the armor that you have left has increased in value because the enemy's ability to take it away has been has been stripped or you know brought back reined in etc i hope this helps somebody out there I wish this was a cleaner video, a more, um, a more, this is the exact formula, and this is how much armor you should have compared to your firepower, and that's the answer at the end. It's way more complicated than that. I'm, I mean, I've got an A-level in statistics, and I'm not entirely comfortable with it. I'm sure there's someone out there who can draw a beautiful curve with... I think you'd need at least three formulas to actually calculate it properly because you have the drop-off at the end where everyone's one-shotting each other and you have that window at the beginning where um, the person with the firepower wins all the time and then you also have that section in the middle where the armoured guy has enough firepower to to win in fewer turns than the guy that has more firepower. Because the guy that has more firepower doesn't have enough firepower to kill in one hit. Whew. Right, that's that done. <laughs> Let us never discuss this topic again. Okay, if you want to discuss this topic, we can get down into some very fine details in the comments. But I hope as a general, um, as a general video and a general of the basic concepts, a general video about the basic concepts, that this helps somebody. Okay, and I'll see you next time.